Hi everybody. Well, I looked up a little more uh, articles to go on before I call it a night here. And one is very sad. Very sad. And um, I don't get it, but it's just, uh, it just takes my breath away some of this stuff. It just does. Yeah, it just does. Um, let me get this going here. Uh, move that over a little bit. Uh, this is um, not good either, really. This is very sad. Uh, the earthquake, my goodness, in western China. That, that was terrible. The death toll in last week's 6.8 magnitude earthquake in western China rose to 93 on Sunday as the search for survivors continue. Oh, my goodness. The earthquake, which hit Sichuan, S-I-C-H-U-A-N, Sichuan province on Monday, was concentrated in Ganaz Tibetan Autonomous Region, southwest of Sang Sichuan's capital, Shangdu. C H E N G D U, D U, D U, Shaidu. Aftershocks are still being felt too, do I don't doubt that. According to the United States Geological Survey, the quake's epicenter was approximately 27 miles southeast of Kangding, Kangding, a city of approximately 100,000. Over 1 million residents in surrounding areas are estimated to have experienced moderate tremors after Monday's earthquake. As of Sunday, another 25 people are still missing as a search for survivors. The recovery of bodies have been complicated to heavy rains and the risk of landslides which forced some residents to relocate to temporary shelters. The earthquake also affected the provincial capital of Shang, Shangdu, which was currently under strict COVID-0 lockdowns with residents not permitted to leave their homes. Video footage appearing online shows Shangdu Residents banging on the metal gates at the front of their apartment complexes, desperate to leave their buildings. Oh my God. Sichuan province is prone to earthquakes due to the Limeshian Fault, which runs through Sichuan's mountains. Sichuan's. The, pro the province of 84 million people was hit by a 6.0 magnitude earthquake last year killing three, injuring 60. In 2008, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake, one of the most devastating in China's history, struck Sichuan, Providence killing almost 90,000 people, sending tremors into cities more than 900 miles away. Bless their hearts. God love them, people trying to get out of their homes, and they were locked in behind iron gates. Remember, and I said in one video where they had also lined up barbed wire fences to keep the people in their homes. Oh, I mean, mm, I have no words. I have no words. Now, there was another article today. Um, I don't want this one here. But another article today. Uh were in Iran. The women want freedom from wearing the scarves around their faces for centuries. You know, it it's, goes back years and years and years. Women wasn't supposed to show their face. Now, to me, that don't make sense. But everywhere they went, even their own homes, I guess they had to wear them. Well, Today's women are getting to where they say, we want to be free. We don't need these scars around our face. Well, one lady 
stepped over the line and went out in public without her scarf over her face and they killed her. The women are just going irate over the death of that poor lady. Just because they want to be free from putting something over their face. Now isn't that stupid? I don't care if it goes back 20,000 million trillion billion years. For God's sakes. And why keep their face covered? Person don't look, you know, if you're looking at someone and you're trying to look at the person, what they have inside, in their heart, you know, you look into the eyes of their soul. Not their whole face. You look into their eyes. Well, these women had these scars just from the nose and everybody could see their eyes. So what, what's going on from the nose down here to your neck? Covering your mouth, you still speak, you still talk. And the women want to get rid of that. I don't blame them. I'd suffocate in that crap. And this poor lady got, they murdered her. And they're telling everybody, don't you talk about it. Don't you tell anybody about it. <laughs> well, I think that's disgusting. Everything anymore to me is getting so disgusting. Now here is another sad thing. Uh, hopefully I don't lose out here. Hang on. Now you know how your children go in school with their friends, playmates, friends, however, you know. The kids can put pure pressure on a child, no matter what age right up into the teenage years, into the early 20s, in college even. You know how they used to do that if you want to, if you want to be in the high up in the society in college, you have to uh, do what we tell you to do, and it could be very harmful. They could die. They could get so messed up mentally that they couldn't even complete their college. Well, it hasn't died out. It still goes on, on and on. FDA warns that social media trend is dangerous. The recipe for danger, social media challenges involving medicines. Social media trends and peer pressure can be a dangerous combination to your children and their friends, especially when involving misusing medicines. One social media trend relying on peer pressure is online video clips of people misusing non-prescription medications and encouraging viewers to do so too. These video challenges, which often target youth, can harm people and even cause death. Non-prescription, also called over-the-counter or OTC, drugs are readily available in many homes, making these challenges even more risky. OTC drugs can pose significant risk if they're misused or abused. The dangers of social media challenges with drugs. A recent social media video challenge encouraged people to cook chicken. Now listen to this. A recent social media video challenged encouraging people to cook chicken in NyQuil, which is acetaminophen acetaminophen, dexatrol thorathan, and doxylamine, or another similar OTC cough and cold medication presumably, presumably to eat. The challenge sounds silly and unappetizing, and it is, but it could be very unsafe. Boiling a medication can make it much more concentrated changing its prop properties in other ways. Even if you don't eat the chicken, 
Inhaling the medication vapors while cooking could cause high levels of the drugs to enter your body. It could also hurt your lungs. But simply, someone could take a dangerously high amount of the cough and cold medicine without even realizing it. Because it's in the air. It's going in your nose, in your mouth, when your mouth is open and you're speaking. Oh, God. Just a minute, Angel. Just a minute, honey. An earlier TikTok challenge urged people to take large doses of the allergy medicine diphenhydramine sold OTC in many products over the counter, including some under the brand name Benadryl, to try to induce hallucinations, prompting by news reports of teenagers needing to go to the emergency room or in some cases dying. After participating in this challenge, taking too much medication. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration warned the public about the danger of high doses of uh, diphenhydramine. You know, they've been warned what you can do to protect your children. Now here's what you can do to protect your children. Huh, good luck. When they get with their crowd out of school or high school or junior high school, college, I don't know, parents. Just hang in there. How can you keep your kids safe and help prevent potentially harmful trends? First, keep both over-the-counter drugs away from children, teenagers, whatever, up and up. Lock everything up in your home. Lock your guns up, lock your medication up, even if it's an aspirin. You gotta lock everything up these days because the kids are being so pressured that they're gonna try anything their friends try you know, we see it in the pets. You know, the pets want to play and they want to go after a toy. Another, another one's going to get that toy first. It's just, it's just a trend and a, like a domino effect, do I want to say? That's a good example, I think. Yeah, pretty good. Oh, my God. And lock up these medications to prevent accidental overdose. Sit down with your children and discuss the dangers of misusing drugs and how social media trends can lead to real, sometimes reversible damage. I mean, it goes up here. You can end up with a mentally retarded child that was perfectly healthy. I've seen it. You've seen it. Hmm... Remind your children that overdose can occur with OTC drugs as well as with prescription drugs. Well, yes. It ain't just the one or the other. It's both of them. Over-the-counter and prescriptions. you got to keep everything locked up. If you believe your child has taken too much medication and is hallucinating, can't be awakened, has had or is having a seizure has trouble breathing, has collapsed, or is showing other signs of drug misabuse, call 911 to get immediate medical attention or contact poison control. Now they've got a number here. And now I don't know if the number is the same all over the country, but I presume it probably is. Uh, and here's the number, 1-800-222- one, two, 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 or online. Your grandchildren, your children, your teenagers, even the ones in their 20s already getting hooked on drugs. You know, it's, oh my God. Social media challenge or not, it is important to use medications as intended. Well, us grown-ups all know that. You know, we do. But even some grown-ups are going off the deep end. I just read another article where, I don't know if I saved it or not, but this father shot his wife in the back while she's trying to get out of the house. He shot one daughter, killed her. The other daughter he injured bad with a shotgun um, after the elections of 2020. He got into a group of some sort I have to get that article back up, but he got killed because he shot at the police. 
you know, and they, they had to shoot. They had to kill him. But he went bonkers just over the election of 2020. Uh, oh, my God. I'll tell you. Social media challenge or not, it is important to use medication as intended. For over-the-counter drugs, you should always read the drug fact labels. Fact, facts labels. The label tells you what the medicine is supposed to do, who should or shouldn't take it, how to use it. The drug facts label uses simple language, easy to read format to help people compare, select medicines, follow dosage instructions. If you have any questions about a medication, including an over-the-counter drug, call your health care provider, pharmacist, or the FDA. The FDA's Division of Drug Information, DDI, ready to answer your drug-related questions to help keep you and your family safe. DDI pharmacists are available by email. Drug info at FDA dot HHS, that's lower score, all of it's lower score, dot gov. And by phone, another phone number, one 855 Four three drug, which is three seven eight four, and three zero one seven nine six three four zero zero. You can also report an adverse event involving any medication, including over-the-counter drugs, by using the FDA's Med Watch Safety. M-E-D-W-A-T-C-H, MedWatch, Safety Information, and Adverse Event Reporting Program. Complete and submit the report online. And there's another phone number there. Is that identical to the others I've read? One, two, two, C. No, these are all separate numbers, but I'm going to give them to you. Write them down, you know, and... Um, just in case you happen to run across, you never know what you might run across these days. You know, 1-800-332-1088 to request a reporting form sent to you in the mail. Then complete return to the address on the form or submit it by fax to 1-800-FDA-0178. And this is content from the FDA current as of 9-15 of 22. Keep your grandbabies safe. Keep your children safe. Keep your teenagers. Keep your adult young people safe. Because, you know, um, the way the drug situation is now from everybody, I mean, people in their 80s and 90s are still smoking pot. You know, pot's supposed to be so safe. But then people have died thinking they could fly like a bird and jumping off a 10-story, 50-story building. And pot's supposed to be safe. Well, it cuts down the pain. Oh, does it really? Oh, I don't know. I'm like you. All this stuff just makes you go crazy, you know. But that man that just over the election, you know, we do what we can do to save our country, to go along with our president and our Congress. But the way Biden is going, no wonder people are pulling their hair out. No wonder people are getting higher on drugs. We don't know what the next minute's going to bring. The midterms are coming. Do what you got to do. Follow your gut instinct and think hard. Now this will be it for me for tonight. Now my doggies are ready to go out and go potty. And I'm ready to go play my cards and then I'm going to go to bed. So <laughs> I love you all. Say your prayers. Stay safe. And God love you. Good night everybody.